Hey, it's Ian from Las Vegas. Good as the lifts again. Today on my lift, I've got something different but the same. Another Solex. Hmm. Okay, so, yes, it's another Solex Transformer with problems, but it's mine. I've acquired this, or we've acquired this, me and the good lady, but it has problems, several. So, its uh, first biggest problem is the battery dead, so that's no good. That's a five to six hundred dollar bill there. Um, it doesn't automatically fold and unfold. That's nice and loose. There's a bit of ripping on the back of the chair. Luckily the front and the seat base is okay. It's got a charger. Just make sure it's the correct charger. Hmm. I'll have to check that model number. I'm not sure if that's a correct lithium charger or not. I'm just reading it as we record this now, but hopefully it's the one she got with it. I'm just wondering why the battery died. Um, armrest has gone a bit saggy because it's missing the screw there. Easy fix, that. Typical loose seat back. Bit of glitter and muck to clean up that's easy enough typical for the transformers these get loose at the front the tiller you can see it's moving backwards and forwards and very loose that's easy enough to do uh, it doesn't fold doesn't unfold automatically it does manually um, tires and wheels look pretty good they'll clean up okay it's missing the rubber caps off the fronts the rears are still there there is a bit of uh, goo, for want of another word, on there, on the footboard there. Not the best colour, yellow. You've got to be a, a yellow lover to want a yellow scooter. I think this should come off. But I'll check it out underneath. I had a quick look. I don't think there's anything broken on it. You should just uh, run the battery to dead. And it won't charge back up again, so... Luckily, as you can see, I've got a spare there. That looks like a bit of gold paint on there. That'll come off, hopefully. But, uh, yeah. I'll check it out and uh, strip it down, clean it. See if I could... I'm sure I've got a relay box for one of these somewhere that uh, I can put in it. But if not, I may have to buy a relay box for it. But, uh, yeah. I'll start by stripping it down and uh, put a battery in it and see if I can get that relay to work. If not, try and find one. I've got one there, but I think this one is no good. This is the one that came out of uh, Dr. Barry, but I'm still waiting for him to bring his scooter in. So yeah, let's get to started on this one and see what I come up with. At least it's mine, it's not somebody else's. So stay tuned. Okay, so I've tipped it up on its uh, seat and I've installed Dr. Barry's relay box there and tried the button at the back and it's still doing exactly the same thing. So I'm thinking the button may be at fault here. So basically what you would have to do if you're replacing either the charge port or the button or even the controller, there's four screws, one there, um, one there that attaches to the frame just there if you can see zoom in there yep one there that attaches there and two up the same on the other side so you have one on the top there and it goes to that there and the same on the other side so you could release this panel so you would have to get in i'll have to go on the other side of the uh, panel to get that switch 
just here. Yeah, I've turned it around. I have to get all this hot glue off of here to get to the screws that are, or push it out. I think it's just pushed in with like side clips. Get that glue out of the way. Yeah, there's like little tabs just there to press in and that switch should come out. And I can figure out which wire it is and I can test the switch, see if it's operating okay with the uh, multimeter. So that's where I'm at at the minute. So I'll put the battery back in, but I took it out now because I'm messing about with the wiring. But it does exactly the same thing, so I'm thinking maybe the switch is faulty. So let's uh, get into the switch and see what I can see. Okay, so let's make sure that the circuit board fits in that rubber seal and then push it back in. Make sure your buttons. Oh. I'll take that out and see what's going on with these buttons. Get a bit of an IPA on it. Just to clean the button up. Not too much that it takes the paint off. Is there any screen printed? Screw should hold everything together. I obviously didn't put it back together correctly, which is fair enough. Okay, that's a lot better. Now the buttons are in the right place. Oh. See if I can get it to sync to the uh, the actual uh, scooter. Get the key. Okay. So, hope, hopefully this is a syncing procedure. Uh, brake handle bent. So press the A button. Press and hold that until you hear a beep four times, I believe, three or four times. That's clear in it. And then swap over to B. And then three beeps. And that should, in theory, um, sync your key fob to your version. Um, I 
four, four, three M. No. Okay, so this is for the drive Zoomy Autoflex. Same scooter, same controller box. So it says here, turn the scooter on its side, blah 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 blah. Press and press the button, it'll beep four times. So press and hold the A button on the key fob until the receiver beeps three times, release the button. Okay, so two, three, four. Press and hold the A button. And it beeps three times. There it goes. Hmm, but not the B. So let's try B button. That's weird. I'm sure a different remote as if it's the remote button. Works on the relays. Getting it to work on the A button but not B. three key fobs and there's your version two same as the autoflex and let's try it again this time. <clears throat> okay, I did a few things off of camera. Put the uh, this back in, put the shroud back on and also put the switch back on and what I tried was the little key fob that's on our demo 
Zumi Auto Flex, and I programmed that one to this controller, to this uh, relay box, and it worked. So I managed to find two batteries. This, this is her original one. But I managed to find two batteries to replace in this key fob. This is a spare one I had for a Zumi Auto Flex, and this now works. So that now folds and unfolds. Put it back on its feet. So that works, and also the button at the back works. So hopefully that's folded. So. Yep, so that works both of them button at the back and also the key fob. So do it again. So that now auto folds. One more time just to fully close it, make sure it closes completely. Yeah. So that's fully closed. And we got it fully open. Yeah. So that saved me uh, a, lot, a bit of money for this. So and the battery I already had. Her charge is somewhere around here, so I've got a charger. So the only thing I need to do is replace armrest covers. And this rear cover. Thank you. And Jenny selling stuff. And also replace and clean, not replace, but clean up the frame and everything. I give it a good service, lubricate, make sure everything works on it, which it does now. Tighten this up, tighten the front tiller up. So that's my next job. I'll get these ordered next week. This is Saturday. Yeah, get these replaced and then uh, get it all cleaned up and sell it. Uh, yeah, let's crack on and get it cleaned. Okay, before I start uh, recording this cleaning process, so these are identical key fobs, but they're two different kinds of key fobs. One of them has a single three volt battery and this one has a double three volt battery this one will sink to that scooter the single one won't scoot won't sink to the scooter so i don't know why there's a difference uh, there must be a different circuit board but uh, maybe that's the problem just thought i'd share that with you uh, i don't know if that may be the problem but have a look at your remotes if you want to replace your remotes and it's uh, broken just uh, if you do want to get a new remote check how many batteries are on it if it's one of these versions an ab version if it's a single battery get a replacement for a single battery if it's a double battery six volt get a six volt one so yeah just thought i'd share that that's the only thing i could see difference between the the uh, the two remotes that I had. So what I'm going to show you before I start cleaning actually is the how to tighten this this up because these get loose all the time and they have bearings top and bottom top and bottom bearings in the steering down in that corner there see the double knot thing there these wander loose and then you tighten it up but you need a very very thin wrench to get in there and the way you, you get into this is you need to re remove this rubber cover so once your fingers tip it on its butt and there's two allen screws under there one there and one on the adjacent side just get my finger in there and 
that collar, you can just see it, just there, is what I've got to try and tighten up, so you have to take this off, it's not difficult, okay, so probably a 4 mil. Four mil Allen. It shouldn't be too tight. Get my head out of the way. And the way you get these off, I've got to fix that. I hold on with two screws, one there, one there. You have to take this yellow thing off, the yellow cover. Undo that. And it's underneath the Velcro portion of the shroud. With these not having suspension, they tend to rattle everything and they get loose and the screws pop out. This one it's come out from the frame, so it's not come off the fender itself, it's come off of the frame. So I'll have to replace that screw. Got my Google goggles on, my new ones. Bought, bought some new ones while I was at CVS. For those uh, watching in the UK, CVS is like boots. The chemist. It's where you get your drugs. We tablets, as we say in the UK. Okay, well that should just come off. And give you access to this collar. Yep. Yeah. See, it's very loose. Not good. So what I do, if I can find it, so what I do is get a four pound lump, no I'm kidding, you don't get a lump hammer, and I've made up from a, a bracket from a, it's a Victory 10 or something like that, and that I can just about squeeze in there. Sometimes this works, sometimes it, it doesn't. There's no steering lock on these, which is a pain in the butt. And you have to be careful of this wire as well. Caught it. Sorry, bumped you. Yeah. There is a kind of stoppers there and there. That on the frame it stops the wheels from turning a bit high enough. So if this doesn't work, if you haven't got a really skinny wrench, there it goes. Usually, because they're usually pretty loose, because they wobble loose going on rough ground. If you can loosen off the top one and then tighten the bottom one. It's a bit like your, uh, I always struggle with this word, push bike we call it in the UK, and that's what I've been born to say. Well, but go out on your push bike, but, uh, your bicycle. So, tighten up the bottom. See, a little bit of play. If you're a little bit unsure, you get a set punch. Tighten it up with that. Just give it a nice tighten up. Just so it's loose enough to steer, but not too loose that it's going to damage your bearings top and bottom. Don't be undoing that. That separates that and that. No need to undo that. There are your tie rods for your steering. Just give it give it a little tighten up there and then this is going to be your lock nut because it's a lock it all together so the way to do it same as on your bicycle tighten up the top one and then loosen up the bottom one to pinch them together you know it's, 
and kind of going one forward, one backwards. And that should lock it together. Nice and tight. It'll probably come loose again. I mean, you could put thread lock on it, but I don't think you can get in to do it. But that should be, there's a little play in the, in the frame, that's normal. But this shouldn't be loose. That drive uh, zoomy we've got in the, the Autoflex we've got in the store has got a cracked frame all the way across there and there. That's why we can't sell it. It's, it's good enough to just use as a demo, show it folding and unfolding, but I'm not going to let somebody buy something like that. So we just use it as a, a demo. But if I uh, heard correctly from our golden sales rep, that uh, Drive Medical, that Drive Medical are actually moving away from doing scooters and power chairs. They're discontinuing everything. Don't know how true that is, but you heard it here first. That you can no longer buy. Just removing the yellow shroud. Just show you. You can replace them. But that that you. You'd have to buy a whole new top console to replace that. Not worth it. I need to remove that to get to the screws. Don't know what I did with that one. Oh, that's my thing. God damn it. So I've lost the shroud cup. I think it may be. Hmm, don't know where that went. Oh, there's a party going off in there. Well, I don't know where my other shop. If it hit me in the face, I probably wouldn't see it. But anyway, there's all the shrouds to go. I'll clean those afterwards. Cleaning this. Okay. So, there's a lot of exposed wires. And also you, your uh, control and your brake, you've got to be careful of this relay box and also your ram. So definitely if you're going to spray it with cleaner, is uh, cover everything up that you don't want to get anything wet. And just carefully, you know, just let it, and then just do it a little bit at a time. So you're not you're gonna wreck anything, especially you break. I'm not gonna take the wheels off of this as I've said in previous videos, they're an absolute pain in the ass. They'll strip out really easy. Stubborn stuff off. this one does white and red paint on it you get some isopropyl alcohol IPA and that should fetch the paint off without 
I meant to use too much elbow grease. I find that works. I've used all sorts of chemicals to try and get this paint off. It's also on armrests. I'm not sure if I'm going to get that off though. We'll see. I had a, uh, two more Solexes come in yesterday. <laughs> Actually three. And uh, I didn't record them. It's, uh, one's a regular customer of ours, Teddy and Tony. Lovely couple. They've done some business for us, a lot of business for us. Nice, lovely couple. And uh, he's He's broken his front shell on his uh, Zoomy Autoflex, so I said, oh, let me see if I can get the part first, and because uh, they are scaling down their production. Like I said earlier, they're, uh, I think they're going to stop doing scooters and power wheelchairs. Not sure about rollators and uh, all that old other stuff that they do. But, uh, you know, as parts start disappearing, they're not going to be replacing them. So. If you have a derived product, don't break it because your parts are going to be very scarce from now on. Well, maybe even worth switching over to a different manufacturer, like Golden Drive, uh, Golden Pride. Solex, there's hundreds of different uh, scooters out there. So, yeah, if your uh, drive is getting old and it's starting to give you issues, especially if it's an older drive, like the Phoenix, not the Phoenix HD, that was released in 2015, I believe. I remember seeing that at Medtrade. I would think that was the last time I saw drive at Medtrade. We haven't been to that trade for a couple of years since they moved it from Vegas. We used to love going there, seeing the dealers and talking to the tech guys and that. Well, I did, and Jenny did. But yeah, that was the last time I saw Drive there. And that's when they, they had the Phoenix HD. I liked it. The top console's a bit shitty, but I did like the the weight capacity, the, the high ground clearance on it. But, uh, like I said, uh, go. according to my rep at uh, Golden, shout out to Eric. He's uh, going to stop. stop production, that's what he said. So we shall see. We did actually try to order a for a gentleman, a heavy duty power chair through drive. And they said, mm, we don't know when that's going to be back in. So it's a good indication saying, well, no, we're not going to be manufacturing that anymore. And I didn't talk to a sales rep, it was the sales rep's boss, because our sales rep was out of our office for a couple of days. So it was from the horse's mouth. Pick them up, put them down, and then put them back. Because yeah, I don't want to take these wheels off. Like I said, the pain in the ass. I will if I have to change them, but if I don't change them, I ain't taking them off. I'm just getting the hair out of the bearings. These are like locking tweezers. So they have like a ratchet system at the bottom. And it clicks and it bites down there so you can grab all of stuff and not let go. Find them useful. Grabbing hair and crud out the wheel bearings. Gets in my throat that stuff. Ah, these have actually got knots on them. Hmm. That's good to know.
And the front ones have got knots. Probably about 12 mil. Mm. <coughs> I spent all last night trying to sort out my video that I've just uploaded for sound. Every now and again I get somebody comment that uh, the volume's not loud enough. And uh, I spent all night trying to mess with that, trying to increase the volume on it. But I think I managed to do it. I use a program called Reaper. In my spare time, I'm, I like to play music, as, hence why I go to see Drew. And he builds me guitars. And I like to play bla bass, 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 bass guitar, keyboard, acoustic guitar, six string guitar. I've even doubled in saxophone and trumpet when I was a kid at school, as you do. But uh, keyboard's my favourite. I do like bass as well. I think I'm done with that. On the underside, which is what I want to do. Tip it back on its wheels. <coughs> and I'm going to leave this to soak. Glitter and all sorts of crud in there. The contact is clear, and I'll give Jenny the serial number. Not that it'll be under warranty, it's just for our records. <coughs> oh, that stuff! Here's the serial number for the yellow Solax. And don't forget to order me those armrest pads. The armrest pads. Please. <coughs> oh God, I need a mask. Use <coughs> this stuff. The other stuff made me cough as well. Again, just be careful with your connectors. Try and keep them as dry as possible. Try not to get any water on them because they will corrode. this side to see what fetches it off. And this will be a, a test. I'm looking for a razor blade just to agitate it. This is what I'm working on. This crud at the side here. This stuff. This stuff does not look good. Okay, I'm just testing it underneath the shroud, so I'm gonna do it on 
on this portion. So, first of all, we'll try IPA. Let's see what this does. I know the paint will go off. It's this other stuff. Let's soak it in. Hopefully, it's just. I don't know what it is. I'm not rubbing too hard. I just want to see if it breaks it down. It feels like glue, but soft glue. No, it's not touching it off. See what I mean? It's like soft. But I don't want to go gouging into it. I'm wrecking me. Footboard. more I can do with that. Alright, my Solex is done. I've replaced the armrests. I didn't replace the back seat rest because it's not too bad. It's not affecting where you sit, so that's, a, that's done. All cleaned up. I couldn't get that pretty much as good as I can get for that. Spent me about two hours doing that, so. But yeah, it's all done. Ready for sale. Battery's uh, been replaced, all been serviced. It uh, folds and unfolds now. I think I'll put it through its paces so it works with the remote. I'll just unfold it. There we go. So, yeah, ready for a new home for somebody who needs a. Uh, transportable folding scooter yeah I have actually got something new in from the same company that brought you the Solex this is the Mojo a gentleman bought this from in-house mobility but uh, it died on him exploded I've already replaced this circuit board that seemed to be one part of the problem we were getting no power but he's also blown this circuit board here so I'm going to have to replace that. They're sending out a new part for that. This wire was exposed. 
it was on top of there well, this rubber wasn't covered pro correctly it was showing he went over a bump and it must have hit that and it shorted everything out but yeah when that's all put back together and fixed i'll go through uh, a little demonstration of this a review of that so yeah that's uh, the new mojo but as far as this uh, my transformer is it's done like i said ready for sale so hope you enjoyed this video like share give us that subscribe we appreciate it any comments you know where to put them and we'll answer as best we can so uh, till next time thanks for watching bye now Oi.